Hey guys, this video has been requested quite a few times in the comments. We will be checking out how you can use a audio mixer with your DOS retro gaming PC. Here we have the setup. It's my Socket 7 Time Machine retro gaming PC with a sound blaster. We've got MIDI with a Roland sound canvas, but that could also be a Roland MT32 or any other MIDI device. We also have a CD-ROM drive with the audio output port here and all the cables go into this mixer. And yeah, there's quite a bit to talk about. Now I have two mixers. I have a two-channel stereo mixer from Behringer and I've got another one from Phonic. This one is more complex, has more features. We will start talking about the benefits. What is the advantage of using a mixer for your retro PC gaming setup? Mixing together a range of audio sources is nothing new. Most sound cards have an integrated mixer. This is the Sound Blaster AW64 value, for example. It's got an onboard mixer where you can mix together the Sound Blaster, the speech, the FM chip, line in, microphone, and so on, as well as the CD audio. But this is all internally inside the machine. It can pick up quite a bit of interference and the mixer chip that's used on such a sound card, it's quite old. It's definitely nothing high-end or hi-fi. So when I've been switching over to using a mixer, I can definitely hear a much cleaner audio, especially over headphones. With speakers, it's not that easy to notice the difference, but if you like playing with headphones, you will really hear better audio. Another big advantage is the convenience. You can adjust the levels on the fly. Sometimes a game has a really awesome music soundtrack and you wanna just crank up the music a little bit, or maybe there's a dialogue and you can't quite make out what they're saying, so you wanna tweak the settings. You can do that in the integrated uh, mix of the sound card. For example, with the Sound Blaster, there's a tool called Mixer Set where you can change the levels in software, but you need to quit the game, change the levels, and then launch the game again. So it's a constant back and forth. And also some games, they initialize the mixer themselves, which is a pain in the neck. So having the external mixer to adjust the levels on the fly, it's really beautiful. Here we have the mixer utility for the Sound Blaster range of sound cards. So we have voice, MIDI, CD, line, microphone, PC speaker, and so on. Because we will be mixing things externally, we can mute CD and the line. We can also mute the PC speaker. We just need voice and MIDI. And what that does is reducing the uh, possible sources of, of noise and interference for a cleaner signal. So spend a little bit of time tweaking the onboard mixer, muting all the inputs that we're not using because we will mix everything together with the external mixer. And another benefit is that when you're mixing together a range of sources, you might get a higher level of noise, some hissing, some interference. And with the external mixer, you can mute uh, things on the fly that you don't use. For example, let's say you're playing Doom 2, which I will demonstrate later. We need the sound blaster and the sound canvas, but we don't need the optical drive. So by muting the optical drive source, we can reduce the noise floor a little bit. And vice versa, if you're playing Screamer 2, which has Sound Blaster sound effects as well as music coming from the optical drive, yeah, we can switch off and mute the channel for the MIDI. As always, the purpose of this video is to help you with your retro gaming PC. I'm not an audio mixer or sound engineer. I did study the user manual of these mixers and I think I got most of the details right but recently yeah I, I tend to make a few mistakes in my videos so yeah if you pick something up as always leave it down below in the comments and we shall learn from each other as a community so let's have a look how everything is connected here we have the retro dos gaming pc this is the sound blaster here's the audio out so we take some rca plugs connected into here and then you need a cable which terminates into two mono 6.3 millimeter jacks. And these go into here, right one and left. 
The Roland Sound Canvas is next. The audio ports for this device are at the back here. We've got the input and the output. So again, we need RCA plugs. Plug it into the output. And then once again, we need a cable that terminates into mono 6.3 millimeter jacks. And we plug that into our mixer. And for the CD audio, we need a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack that goes into the headphone port of our optical drive. With the other end terminating into RCA and going into our two track input, left and right. Most of the optical drives from back in the day have a 3.5 millimeter headphone port as well as a little dial to adjust the volume. This makes it really easy to connect to a mixer. However, at the back of the optical drive, there's a little port for a four pin cable that would connect to the sound card. And what you can do is build your own little bracket at the back of the case and route some audio ports to the back of the case. That's what I did, but that's something you need to build yourself. I think having the cable coming out from the front yeah, I think it's acceptable, but some of you want some clean cable management with no cables coming out from the front. So yeah, it depends on your situation. Now our mixer does support three stereo inputs, but only the first two have a level dial to adjust the volume. The third one, we will be using the two track return channel. This one doesn't have an adjustment for the level. So this is where the control, the volume control on the optical drive comes in really handy. That way we can adjust all three audio sources, the Sound Blaster, the MIDI and the CD audio tracks individually. Let's do a practical demonstration. The game running in the background is Doom 2. So we have the Sound Blaster connected to channels 2 and 3 and we've got the Sound Canvas connected to channels 4 and 5. Channel 1 is not used, I'm not using a microphone. All the channels are muted at the moment and we're also not using the CD audio from the optical drive. It's using the two channel return track. There's a button here. These two buttons decide where you're sending the two track return signal. At the moment this button is depressed so it's not engaged which means we're not mixing this channel into the main. If you want to mix it with the main so if you want to hear the CD audio you need to uh, engage this button, but this game doesn't use CD audio, so we disengage this one. Here we have the volume for the headphones. So let's adjust the level so we get the getting the sound effects and the music. I aim for the dials to be somewhere halfway between the halfway setting and the maximum, so one or two o'clock. And we can see the level meter here showing us we have a signal. And then you can balance. Let's say you want to focus on the music. We dial down the sound effects, crank up the music a little bit. If you want to do the opposite, mute the music, turn on the sound effects and we can focus on hearing the sound effects. And also, I really like playing uh, with headphones. It's got its own output port for the headphones. Really convenient. I'm always a little bit scared when using headphones with old computers. When you turn on the, when the power on the computer, you might hear a loud pop. So with the mixer, you can just mute it, plug in your headphones, and you can be assured that you're not gonna get a surprise pop. And the second demonstration, we have Screamer 2, which uses the Sound Blaster for the sound effects, as well as the CD audio for the music. So I have muted the fourth and fifth channel, that's the MIDI device, we're not going to use that, but I have the volume halfway for the Sound Blaster. Now the CD audio comes through the two track return and we need to engage this button here to send it to the main mix. We can now see the music playing. Let's turn down the Sound Blaster, we can isolate the music and this game has a CD player where we can yeah, select which tracks we want to listen to. 
because the two track to return doesn't have a volume dial, you can just use the volume dial at the front of the optical drive. I'm just gonna do that now. So by turning it to the left, we can lower the volume of the music and by adjusting it to the right, we can increase the volume. So yeah, that's a convenient way to have a third input with level adjustments on a two channel stereo mixer. In this game especially, I don't like the sound effect being too loud. The music is pretty good, yeah, a reminder of <laughs> dance music from the early 90s and yeah, I prefer focusing on the music, but I want to hear some of the engine noise of course without the volume being too loud and that's the beauty of having the external mixer. I can adjust the sound effects on the fly just enough so it's comfortable, you can still hear what's going on, but with the focus being on the music. You will also need to buy quite a few cables. I have a big plastic container box with all my audio stuff. That's how I organize my gear in large plastic containers. The boxes are labeled, so it's quite easy for me to find stuff. But yeah, if you don't have the cables yet, you will definitely need to purchase a few. It can be a situation of cable spaghetti mess. Uh, so depending on your setup, yeah, you might have to do some cable management. But with three sources, it's not too bad. It can quickly get out of hand if you've got a MIDI tower with a couple of devices, then the amount of cables, yeah, it can get a little bit messy. So just keep that in mind. I will try to find some cables and some purchase links down below in the video description to help you out a little bit. Let's take a look at my first mixer. It's from Behringer, the 502. I believe this specific model is discontinued because there are updates with USB to hook up your phone, but there shouldn't be any issues finding a equivalent modern replacement of this one. So we have quite a bit going on, but it's not as nearly as complicated as the larger one. So the first channel, is all the way down here. This one is for a XLR microphone or a single mono input. So if you have a 386 with a sound blaster with mono sound, you can actually use this port. Here you can adjust the level of this channel, of the first channel. We have an equalizer for high and low frequencies. So I recommend setting this one halfway. We can adjust the pan or the balance towards the left or towards the right and here the level or volume of the first channel. At the moment I'm not using it so I will put it to zero. These two channels 2, 3 and 4, 5 are for these two ports. That's where I connect the sound blaster and the sound canvas. So channel 2, 3 which is this area here is for the sound blaster. It's an AW64 gold and channel 4, 5 these two ports goes to this one. So again, we can select the balance, make sure it's set to the center, and here we can adjust the level, the volume, so to speak. For a good signal level, I recommend setting it somewhere between halfway and max. So usually I go for one or two o'clock somewhere in this region and you will get a good signal without any distortion or clipping. Main out, this is where you connect to your amp, to your amplifier or directly into your speakers. And here is the headphone port. I'm using an adapter to connect my headphones. There are additional ports here. These are labeled two track and we have an input and an output. Let's start with the output first. This is yeah, used for sending the signal to an external recorder. For example, in my case, I'm using a cable here that goes into a capture computer running Audacity for this video. So everything I'm doing here will get recorded on another computer. So this is awesome for streamers. You can have your main speakers here or your headphones there and then have another output here to record, stream, capture, whatever you like. And we're getting a bonus additional input, the two-track input here, or also called two-track return. Um, you can see that here. We have to understand what these two buttons do. They are used to send the two-track input either to the headphones or to the main mix. So 
let's say we're playing Doom 2, which uses Sound Blaster and General MIDI. I'm not using the CD audio, so I'm disengaging this button. That means the CD audio sound is not getting mixed to the main. But if I'm playing Screamer 2, which has CD audio, I press this button and now the optical drive that's connected to the two track input is getting routed to the main mix. And finally, we have two adjustments here. This one is the main level for the main mix, meaning your main out. And we have an additional adjustment here for the headphones. And this is my second mixer, the Phonic AM240. More ports, more options, more complicated to use. I bought this one because yeah, at the time I thought I needed, but in the end, I'm using the smaller mixer most of the time. This one can be handy if you have a MIDI tower with like an MT32 and a sound canvas and maybe a Yamaha and you wanna have everything connected into a single mixer. On this mixer, we have two microphone inputs, number one and number two. Gain for the microphone, we have equalizer, high, mids and lows. And here's a button, if you engage that one, it will cut off the low frequencies below 75 Hertz. So if you have some, I don't know, some low frequency interference going on, you can engage uh, that button and cut that off. And then we've got the same ports that we had on the other mixer level, which is the volume basically, the pan, which adjusts the left right balance. And then this is new, it says AUX. And what this does is it's got individual um, dials to send this channel to the AUX port. And the idea was, to send this to like an effects uh, processor to maybe add some re uh, reverb or chorus or something like that. And then you would send it back from the effects processor to one of the other inputs. Um, in short, we don't need that feature at all for what we do. And here we have four stereo channels. You can see them up here. So in a situation, let's say you connect your sound blaster here MT32, sound canvas, Yamaha device, and then you can use the two track return for your optical drive. Again, each one of these channels has a dial to send the channel to the aux port, which we don't need. Make sure the balance is also adjusted correctly. And then we have individual levels for each of the channels. Main is where you send the output of the mixer to your amplifier or to your powered speakers. Here we have the two track output. It is labeled record out and can be used if you're streaming, for example, to connect it to your streaming computer. And these two buttons, they decide where do you wanna send the two track return signal. So we connect our optical drive here with the CD music. This is the button, this one here two track return to main. This one will take the signal from the optical drive and send it through the main output. There's another button here where you can send it to the control room output, which is this. Not quite sure what this one is for. I guess you can just use this as an additional output if you like. And then here we have the main volume adjustment and another dial to adjust the volume of your headphones. And one more dial here, this one is the AUX send. It's basically the master level for all these individual AUX levels to send it out to the AUX send. Again, for retro PC gaming, I can't think of a scenario where we need this. And I almost forgot to explain what these toggle buttons here do. They have to do with the strength or the level of the input signal. I had a look in the manual and there seems to be a difference in terms of the uh, signal level, depending on if it's in a studio or if it's at home. Basically what this means is if you hook everything up and the volume is really, really low, then you should be engaging this button. And I believe for home use, which is what we're doing, these buttons should be engaged. 
So guys, let's summarize this video. We had a look at the retro gaming PC setup and how you interact with all the inputs, mixing everything together. We had a look at all the options and controls and the ports of these mixers as well as how you can tweak the integrated mixer on your sound card. And yeah, I really think this is a nice upgrade for your audio. You get better quality compared to the onboard mixer that's on the sound card, but the ability to adjust the levels while playing games is absolutely fantastic. And you can also mute devices that you're not uh, using at the time to reduce noise. For a long time, I was using the more complex phonic mixer with the four stereo channels, but yeah, it's because I wasn't quite 100% familiar with all the features. The two stereo channel mixer is perfectly suitable. You can mix three stereo inputs because it has the two channel return input and that should cover most of your retro machines out there. Most of you have a sound blaster at least and an optical drive. If you have a MIDI device as well, that's three input devices. And yeah, that's all you need. In terms of pricing, they shouldn't set you back too much, around 50 or $60, I believe. I will hunt down for some links uh, online, Amazon and so on, and put them down below in the video description. So all in all, if you want to elevate your retro PC audio to the next level, consider investing into a mixer. You will also need to get some cables, but once everything is neatly set up and you've done some cable management, it's really convenient. And yeah, so I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this setup using a mixer for your retro gaming PC? How do you configure your sound setup? I'm really interested to hearing from you. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, consider joining our Patreon. We have a really fun Discord server with interesting discussions where we can help you out with your own projects as well. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.